After witnessing his father's tragic demise, a socially inept engineering student creates a robot to exact his revenge. One chaotic evening, a child sees people fleeing in panic. As the police move into the area, the men enter a building, slowly creeping toward the target. They come upon an imposing robot with a countdown monitor on its chest connected to numerous gas tanks. The lead policeman alerts his comrades to evacuate the area, just as the entire room explodes. Elsewhere, a bruised up Yeya is handcuffed, while an older man, Faris, interrogates him about his involvement in a crime. He greets Yeya and says he's happy to see him alive, even though he had his men capture him. The interrogator opens a file holding information about Yeya as his life flashes before him. Weeks ago, Yeya attends engineering class, and in the middle of the lecture, Reika, his best friend, whispers about her car modification project. When Yeya answers, the sharp-eared Professor Faris hears, and he calls out to the student to answer the question on the board. The shy man approaches the board and answers it with a new formula the professor never taught the class. When Yeya offers to teach the professor the method, the offended man kicks him out of the class. Disheartened, Yeya hurriedly walks down the corridor and accidentally bumps into a man holding tea. When the furious man bullies Yeya, Reika comes to his rescue. Unfortunately, Yeya's crush, Mariam, witnesses his cowardice, causing him to flee, while Reika de-escalates the situation. At home, Yeya's father, Mr. Saleh comforts his son, admitting that he too had similar experiences in his youth. Moments later, the father tells his son he'd like to take a walk and visit the hut. As they exit the house, Nasser arrives on a motorcycle and demands to know where Sama is. Saleh had sent Sama, their maid, to her parents' house for safety, knowing Nasser's involvement in illegal activities. Saleh's words irritate the arrogant man, and before he leaves, he asks Saleh if his wife was the one who called the police. However, Saleh admits it was his doing, cementing the thug's grudge against the older man. After Nasser leaves, the father and son continue to the hut, where all of Yeya's hobbies and inventions are. The man asks his father about his stillborn older brother's name, confusing his father, who answers, Musa. Upon hearing the word, Yeya introduces his miniature robot with the same name. Yeya explains that he developed Musa and can control it remotely by VR set, as he puts a device on his head. He says the device will connect to his spinal nerve through his temporal lobe, and via his thoughts alone, he's able to control the robot. Yeya demonstrates by making the robot easily crush a stone. The proud Saleh applauds his son's achievement, just as Mariam knocks on their door. With concern, she asks if Yeya's alright, and only receives a tiny smile in response before the awkward man leaves the hut. The woman apologizes to Saleh for the sudden visit, but before she turns to follow Yeya, the older man asks her to stay for a while. After sitting down, Saleh asks if she loves his son. She doesn't answer the question, but insists that she isn't his friend just because she pities him. Mariam then recounts how she first met Yeya when she asked to borrow his headphones for a piano lesson. She says she tried to return the headphones, but no one knew who Yeya was, which made her realize that he didn't have any friends. During the interrogation, Faris asks how Saleh passed away, which Yeya denies ever happened. Weeks ago, Yeya cleans the glass panes, while Saleh says Mariam has feelings for him. However, the man believes otherwise because he sees her with a handsome man all the time. To encourage his son, Saleh recounts courting his wife, eliciting a smile from Yeya. Then, the older man asks Yeya to make some tea while he puts on some music. As the son puts the kettle on the stove, he hears a car outside and peeks through the door. He sees Nasser and two other men exit the vehicle. The thugs enter the house and attack Saleh, causing him to fall to the ground, while his son cowardly peeks from the kitchen doorway. Nasser and his men steal cash and other valuables, before setting the entire house on fire. After the men leave, the petrified Yeya sees his dying father engulfed by flames in the living room. Later, the man sits in front of his fire-ravaged house and watches the medics carry his father's lifeless body into the ambulance. After some time, Mariam visits Yeya and tries to comfort the man, who says he'll sell his house, as he only needs the hut. Later that night, Yeya sleeps on the cold floor, mourning his loss. The following day, the man goes to the police station to file a report against Nasser. However, the lack of evidence and his questionable credibility as the only witness caused causes the authorities to doubt his statement. During the interrogation, Faris callously remarks that Yeya should have walked into the fire and died with his father, and that he couldn't do it because of cowardice. Remembering the night, Yeya 
has stares at the pile of money after selling the house, and his guilt for leaving his father to die makes him impulsively lock his house, throw the keys out the window, and pour alcohol all over himself. However, as he holds a lit match, Yeya can't push through with ending his own life, and puts out the flame. Then, his father appears before him, asking him to avenge his death and change the world. After Yeya turns his back for a split second, his father vanishes, so the man panics and tries to open his locked door, forgetting he threw the keys out the window earlier. Immediately, he places his robot in front of the door, before controlling it to blast the lock open. He then realizes the incredible power he possesses when he stares at Musa. Inspired, the man works in his hut, planning, building, and programming a life-size Musa. On Yeya's last visit to the police station, Nasser mocks him, unaware that the man has plans for him. In an abandoned building, Nasser spots Yeya and orders his men to find him. Yeya hides in one of the rooms, while the thugs search the area. Yeya puts on his VR headset and activates Musa, who rolls out from under his car that's parked outside the building. One by one, the robot takes out Nasser's cronies with ease. Outside, Nasser hears the loud sounds coming from inside, before finally facing the imposing robot, twice his height. Seeing the evil man run away in fear through the VR set, Yeya can't help but smile, before throwing a wooden beam to take down the fleeing man. Musa places Nasser in the car and seals the door shut with the intense flame in its hand. The robot then flips the car over, while tearing the gas tank, blowing up the vehicle. As the robot turns, Yeya sees an innocent man filming the riveting events on his phone. He lets the man go despite the possibility of exposing himself to the authorities, and the man immediately uploads the video on the internet. While the video spreads far and wide, Yeya acknowledges his revenge for his father's death with a smile before settling in bed. Elsewhere, a doctor examines Yusuf, Farah's son. The doctor reveals that his son's disease is worsening, and he needs surgery in Germany that costs 200,000 euros, which the professor can't afford. The doctor then suggests an experimental procedure by a young doctor, but Faris refuses to place his son at the hands of an inexperienced surgeon. In the middle of their conversation, Faris receives a call regarding a new assignment, so he leaves the clinic angrily, smashing a glass pane on the door and injuring his hand. One rainy night, Yeya receives a message from an internet friend saying he knows Yeya made Musa after hacking into his computer. Meanwhile, Faris attends a meeting about the robot incident, and the official assigns Zakaria and Faris on the case. Later, the police come upon the crime scene, taking notes regarding the dangerous robot's capabilities. Concurrently, a group of billionaires hold a meeting discussing their desire to acquire the robot for their own financial gain. They then scheme to plant a spy within the police force to get information. Meanwhile, Reika visits Yeya and they watch Faris' appointment in the investigation team for the robot incident on TV. Then, Reika shows him the sketch pad she borrowed, and flips to the page showing Musa's illustration, which implies that she knows about his secret. In a serious tone, the woman says it's alright and she won't tell anybody, before asking the man if she can see Musa. Yeya opens the secret door on the floor to his basement, and Reika stares at the robot in awe. Later, Reika takes Yeya to her place, showing him her car they can use to transport Musa. They then talk about Yeya's motivation for avenging his father, as well as all the people who've been wronged in the world. Yeya observes the artwork on the walls and sees the phrase, the old world must end. Reika says she supports his actions, and recites the quote on the wall as their mantra. Then, Yeya reveals that he has a friend from the dark web who sent him a list of people that need to be stopped, because they sell illegal substances, guns, and orphans for organ trafficking. The following day, the two friends drive to a warehouse, and as they approach the building, they unleash Musa from the car. In the warehouse, armed men hear a loud noise from outside. All of a sudden, Musa breaks through a wall using a car, prompting the men to fire at the robot. Yeya immediately gets to work and disposes of the criminals, who quickly realizes their rifles aren't slowing Musa down. Unfortunately, a higher caliber machine gun bothers the robot, damaging it to a certain extent that even Yeya is in visible pain while controlling Musa. In the middle of the chaos, Musa is thrown across the room when a leaking gas drum explodes beside him. Then, the robot narrowly misses a rocket-propelled grenade. Despite the pain and the damage to the robot, Yeya pushes himself to control Musa. After willing the robot to get back on its feet, Yeya takes the thugs down one by one, before finally rescuing the kidnapped children, and escaping the area before the authorities arrive. 
Meanwhile, the police receive a phone call about Musa's latest feat and immediately head to the warehouse to investigate, where they find 20 criminals hanging from the ceiling. Faris finds another clue that Musa is remotely controlled, and the controller has to be near the crime scene for it to work. Later, Reika takes the VR set and asks Yeya how he controls Musa. In response, he takes a lighter and lights the flame near her hand, and she reacts quickly. He explains that her spinal reflexes caused her to move her hand away from the flame, and he likens this response to how Musa's controls work. Whatever action she thinks of is then transmitted to the robot, who executes it. Days pass, and the vigilante heroes fight crimes all over the city, from rounding up thugs to rescuing children from burning buildings. They leave a lasting impression in people's hearts, and their increasing popularity prompts people to put up posters of support for Musa. Meanwhile, Faris finally invents a counter device for the vigilante robot. One rainy day, Reika visits Yeya with Mariam. They finally reveal their secret and show her Musa. However, Mariam argues that what they're doing could cost them their lives, and discourages them from continuing. Now that someone else who doesn't support their cause knows their secret, Yeya and Reika must hide everything and move discreetly. Meanwhile, the authorities get a lead from a video showing a car that seems to be hollow, which they think might be a vehicle used to carry Musa. They trace the car's license plate to Saleh, who they connect to Nasser. The police then search Yeya's hut but find nothing suspicious. While Zakaria interrogates Yeya, Faris leaves the room and follows Hamdi, Zakaria's assistant. He asks the assistant to show him the records room, and upon entering, asks Hamdi if he's working with somebody else. The assistant denies the accusation, but when the professor is about to inform Zakaria, Hamdi finally falls and admits he works for Samir, Mariam's father and the billionaire who adamantly wishes to procure Musa. After learning this information, Faris promises not to tell anyone about Hamdi's transgressions and leaves. That night, Faris rushes his son to the hospital after an episode, but still refuses the experimental treatment the doctor offered. After the doctor leaves, Faris assures Yusuf he'll be alright. In response, his son says that he isn't worried because Musa will save him. After hearing his son's words, Faris devises a plan. Faris meets up with Samir and strikes a deal with the billionaire. He'll lead them to Musa in exchange for the money for his son's treatment. Sensing his desperation, Samir accepts his proposal, and they shake hands. The professor immediately devises a plan for a group of men to hijack a train. At the same time, a journalist will take a video of the events and post it on the internet to catch Musa's controller's attention. Eventually, Yeye sees the news about the hijacking, and the two vigilantes drive toward the train. Another group kidnaps Mariam, because they're aware that she is Yeya's weakness. While watching the news, the professor calls his men and orders them to detach the train car. Moments later, Musa jumps into the hijacked carriage, unaware the men are waiting. Using the jamming device, they interrupt Musa's signal to Yeya's headset, cutting off the controller and allowing the criminals to start dismantling the robot with a chainsaw. Fortunately, a passenger notices this and snatches the jamming device, enabling Yeya to connect with Musa and beat up the criminals. Seeing that the train car is almost fully detached, Musa uses its body as a bridge for people to use to get to the other car. After all the passengers are safe, Musa's body is severely damaged and thrown to the side of the railroad. Later that night, the two vigilantes find a DVD in the hut and play it. They watch the video and learn Mariam's been kidnapped. Reika assumes it's a trap, but Yeya fears for the woman's safety and wishes to save her. He heads to Samir's mansion and informs him that Faris has his daughter. The older man calls the professor and angrily says that abducting his daughter wasn't part of the plan. After sending Faris full name to his friend from the dark web, Yeya plans to destroy Musa to emphasize his importance as the only person with knowledge of the robot's blueprint, hopefully securing Mariam's safety. He then sends out a video to the world of himself explaining his life and introducing himself as Musa's creator, before revealing where the robot is. He says his goodbyes to his invention before heading to Faris' hideout to surrender himself. Minutes later, Musa explodes after the police enter the building, and Faris receives the news through a phone call. The professor mocks Yeya that he has to write a blueprint for Mariam's freedom. However, the man also warns him that Samir won't let him off easy if he doesn't let the billionaire's daughter go. Realizing Yeya has a point, Faris orders his men to set the woman free. After hearing her voice through Reika's phone, assuring she's safe, Yeya starts writing the blueprint on the wall. He covers his nose and mouth with his shirt while secretly cracking open an ampule. Meanwhile, Rika closes all the car windows as a 
vehicle spraying a thick white smoke passes. After the guards cough and pass out from the smoke, a group of men inside a van immediately plant explosives all over the building. The group's leader is Yeye's mysterious friend from the dark web. Inside the building, Faris, who thought the smoke was just routine bug spraying, is unaware of what's happening. Yeye continues writing down the formula, when the professor notices that something's amiss, so he escapes. Yeye immediately erases the writings on the wall, but unfortunately can't leave the building as far as men are blocking the exit. So he calls Rika and tells her to drive away, but not before confessing his true feelings for Mariam, something he could never do before. Eventually, the planted explosives detonate, and walls cave in on Yeya. Meanwhile, Faris finds himself stuck at a police checkpoint and realizes he'll get caught either way, and resigns to his fate. He calls the doctor and finally agrees to the experimental procedure from the young surgeon. He defeatedly caresses his son's head, as he watches Akaria walk towards his car. Moments later, Yeya's friend enters the building with a cart and finds Yeya alive under the rubble. He states that people like them don't die easily, before helping his friend out from under the debris and out of the building. Meanwhile, a mysterious man scours the crime scene and finds Musa's intact mainframe on the ground. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.